Okay, we're back. Um, so, okay, I guess it's in the M17 live channel on Discord. Great. And also uh, here. Perfect. So I have only one window to monitor for the chat. Amazing. All right. So um, today uh, we are going to care about um, routing the transceiver part of the circuit. Um, <coughs> So in the schematic, this is what it looks like. Uh, can I have maybe some feedback in the chat to, to see if everything's working for you uh, as well as it is for me? And also, uh, we should have about 10 seconds of latency. Uh, Okay, looks good, perfect. Yeah, so the um, yeah the latency should be very uh, much uh, lower than yesterday, um, and also quality is improved. So, yay. <clears throat> okay. Um, what do we have in front of us? Um, mainly this, which is the transceiver in itself. And um, then we have the RF outputs right here, and then the RF, maybe let's say subsystem, something like that. So basically, we have um, balance which will convert our differential signals to a single ended one for um, the sub gigahertz band and then the 2.4 gigahertz band here. And then uh, some filters and a switch so that we have only one uh, antenna connector for everything. Um, so we also had to discuss about um, the placement of the antenna. Uh, so as of now, okay, uh, yeah, uh, I have some freezes. I don't know where it's coming from might be from the graphic card uh, which yeah it, those doesn't seem to be overloaded but um, yeah uh, okay let's keep an eye on this on the side uh, to see if we can spot something um yeah okay so uh yesterday we routed the um, the gpios of the fpga and uh also we did the lvds pairs with uh the wiggles here so the basically the features that you add to the tracks so that you can tune the length and uh, this ensures that the the signals arrive at the same points in the circuit at the same time so you don't lose synchronicity and things like that. Uh, this is the transceiver of course with uh, both the outputs sub gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz outputs. We have this which is the TCXO which will be generating the clock for the for the circuits and uh, this is this clock which will be transmitted um, in RF uh, via, of course, PLLs and so on. So this needs to be uh, taken care of uh, as well as possible. And then uh, general uh, routing for the power supply, decoupling and so on. And uh, for that, uh, so you can see that part of it is already routed, which I did a few days ago. And um, we will have to have a look again at the the routing of the dev board because it seems that yeah for the power supply they have some advices and we will have a look at that to see if what we are doing is is correct 
Alright. <clears throat> um, so what do we have? So we have a lot of ground signals. Um, D, E, V, D, D, so this will be digital external V, D, D, so this is power supply. Uh, then here we have the, yeah, all the DSPI signals. Uh, those, okay, so, so those two on the left and those two on the right, they are uh, external signals which are used if you want to control anything like um, a, a low noise amplifier or a power amplifier, basically an, a front end. So we don't have anything connected to it on this, um, but we will have uh, headers on the board so that we can connect an external device if needed. <clears throat> so it will, yeah, depending on what we want to do later on, we might use them, we might not. But just in case, if we need them, they will be here and routed on the board. Uh, so actually there is not that much to do uh, for this, I, I suppose. And this one is a, capa a decoupling capacitor for the uh, internal regulation. Uh, this is the same thing. Uh, reset signal from the MCU, so that's... Uh, okay, maybe we'll start with uh, the TCXO. And uh, when uh, Wojciech uh, will join us, he will... Uh, yeah, just please... Um, Okay, all right, um, TCX, so, so uh, what it looks like on the schematic is this, so uh, the crystal itself, we have an input decoupling capacitor, and then um, this is a DC blocking capacitor and then a matching, impedance matching for, for this, which should be yeah, but, uh, 10 kilo ohms and 10 picofarad. So if we copy this value, we can have a look at the data sheet if needed. And so, yeah, a data sheet. Um, output load, yeah, 10 kilo ohms in parallel with 10 picofarads, which is very classical. Okay, <laughs> well, um, let's hope uh, Fochek will find his potatoes. <clears throat> um, I will also open the documentation for uh, the transceiver. So this is, I think, uh, this. Okay, so we had a look at it yesterday for the LVDS pairs. Mm, but today we're interested in uh, the TCXO, the clock, uh, which is here. And so you can see that basically it's kind of the, th the same as what we have uh, on our board. Bl TC blocking capacitor and uh, impedance matching. This is a very common way to do it. Um, so yeah, we will need to um, place it um, yeah around here, and so like something like this should be 
good and we will put those away from the transceivers so that we can have room for the power supply and so on later on. Okay, get rid of all this. Um, and this, uh, so we can take a bit more space if needed. Okay, and uh, this is like this. And yeah, so the, on the data sheet of the crystal, they recommend to do uh, some, something like this for the decoupling capacitor. Um, I don't think we really need to do uh, that. It should be good enough uh, with simply the capacitor, which is so C501. Okay, this one. And we can that's here and it should be good enough okay so this was easy Okay, maybe we will space this a bit more so that we will have space for the ground. So we will need some fias there later on. So we have plenty of room for the vias here. Uh, same thing. Ground. Okay, same thing, we have room. Ground here too. Okay, um, but when we have a look at how they routed the balls. Okay, so this. And so it's rotated by 90 degrees compared to the way ours is placed. And let's get rid of all these. We don't need them, okay. Oh. Ah, okay. But <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you, if you if you try to compare uh, the, this PDF and the, the board, you can see that we have um, so uh, in which way was it? So the those are the LVDS pairs on, on the left and they are on the bottom in our PCB so you have to rotate it a 90 degree counterclockwise so this is uh, on the top for us and this is on the on the left so you can see that they do not route all, all the ground pads to the center pad and um, the one that they do route, it's uh, so 16, if we have a look on the schematic, it's the AVSS, so analog ground basically are routed to the exposed pad. Yeah, it's uh, the, the analog is routed as an, is described as an analog ground so for the exposed, exposed pad. So we need to basically join all the AVSS together on the, the exposed pad and then the rest can be routed away from the exposed pad and then join the rest of the ground of the ground of the system. So this will avoid having all the noise from the digital subsystem of the device being mixed and uh, gener generating common mode parasitic signals uh, on for the, the power supply and uh, all the rest. So basically this these ground pins will be noisy and if we connect them to those 
those will be um, noisy too and so then the analog references won't be uh, as uh, clean as needed okay um, so that's basically it um, so the one that we need to route away it's basically everything except the ones that are already connected to the to the exposed pad all right um, maybe we can uh, route the SPI signals so those yeah it's pretty annoying because they're on the left of the FPGA mostly um, but oh no we have them uh, oh no no I, they are connected yeah to the extension connector so yeah what is this one yeah it's RF reset and this is to control the RF switch and the rest uh, this one is Uh, it's not connected actually. Let's put a mark on that and re import the changes in the board. Okay, so this one is not connected. All right. Uh, speaker, oh, maybe we can just route that one too. Very easy. Uh, let's go on the bottom tracks. Um, we might have up to one watt of power going through, so uh, we may want to have thicker traces. So let's use 0.25 millimeters can we maybe run them this way yeah okay Okay, um, those don't need to be that spaced out. Okay, good. Okay, so how are we gonna connect the SPI signals up to the transceiver? Mm -hmm. So the top layer is taken by the, the LVDS pairs, so we need to let them alone. And second layer is for the ground, third layer is gonna be mainly for the power supply. And so we can route signals on the power supply plane, but it will be our last resort option. If we don't have any choice, then we will do it on that layer, but it must be avoided as much as possible. So that the, the, the power supply design is gonna be much easier later on. Okay, so this one, where does it need to go? Up on this, this will be easy. Okay, and uh, that's all right. One done. Clock and uh, interrupt. Where does the interrupt need to go? Okay, this one. Okay. okay. Get that closer. Uh, 
Okay, we have just the room needed for a via. And um, we might be able to go down to uh, which via was it? Clock. This one. So there is. Okay, it's three rounds. So maybe we can do something like this. need to go okay all the way down to here okay, if I do that what did it do hmm not great well okay actually no it's all right we can just pull a bit on those tracks and do not go too close to this one, we don't need it. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, that's two. Hmm. Still don't like that too much. It's okay. Well, those are far apart anyway, so we are gonna have long tracks. Um, so this is slave outputs, and this need to go down. Uh, ah. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, this was... Uh... Okay, this is gonna be problematic because we have the um, protection resistor which is... Uh... not on the correct... Uh... So we would need the VIA to be on the other side um... Hello, Bastien. Okay, so let's think about what we can do for the SPI slave output. So it's gonna be um, this pin is an output for both the FPGA and the transceiver, but. It's the FPGA which will be outputting mostly the the transceiver. It's it will be used a bit for the configuration and so on, but then not that much. Um, maybe what we could do is add an additional resistor that would be um, placed near the. Um, yeah, so we could what we could basically do. is um, this one we could remove it and place one near the FPGA and one near the transceiver so this would make more sense and um, yeah it would protect both uh, it would reduce the AMI from both the FPGA and the transceiver and also avoid having any short circuit between the two. So let's do that. This one we don't need it then. And uh, 
this one we will need to add the resistor. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, good Bastien, but yeah, it, I set it up, it's not that uh, rocket science. Uh, OBS is quite straightforward to use. Uh, thing is, I have sometimes a few um, freezes, but I think it's related to the graphic card that I'm using. Uh, it's an AMD W5500 Pro, uh, which was lended to me by a friend. And uh, yeah, it seems that this causes some freezes sometimes. It's a bit weird. Uh, but for now, I think I can deal with it, but maybe I will have a look later on. But yeah, and maybe not, not today. Um, I'm tired enough today and I'm barely able to route anything on KiCad. And yes, it's uh, X264 encoding on the GPU, yes. <clears throat> so. Um. Let's use a classical 100 ohms, it will be way enough. And yeah, okay, uh, we don't have enough space for that. How can we free up some space? This can be placed here and this can be dragged further away. We don't need this to be visible actually. Like this. And then we can take that out of this mess. Hey, come on. Those, uh, I will keep them aligned. Uh, so uh, let's do it like this. And okay, left aligned too. Okay, all right. And so now we can put our small like this. And Right here, okay. And this can be okay, all right. Uh, yeah, not the best part of the schematic, but it will do. Uh, so we added this one right here and uh, let's copy that and place one uh, so it's miso Okay, like this, and we have the enough room so that we can pull a bit on those, so everything stays nice and tidy. Uh, maybe. To associate the footprints with the two new resistors. Uh, right here, and uh, we are gonna use 042 like this, like that. Okay, perfect. And what did I do? Wait.
Okay, it's alright, it's saved. So PCB import the changes updates. We have two new resistors and one which disappeared right here. But we will need to replace it with uh, this one I think. Drop in replacement like that. Perfect. This one is done and now we need to add this right here. We will remove this via. And via. Okay. And now Oh yeah, okay, this one kept the old net, so nope, wrong key. Perfect. All right. Well, this is basically the SPI done, is it? So what do we have? We have uh reset pin which needs to go down to and this one shouldn't be used that much so it's not critical and so like this okay keeping it going straight out of the pad And go down, uh, down to so where should we go? Maybe we can, hmm. oh, we can take this a bit higher up. This can go up too. So we have way enough space to route the signal down to there. Uh, so, okay, let's do that. Down, 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 down. Uh, like this. Nice problem statement, well, thanks. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, 
uh, we don't have to avoid this circle anymore because we are on the top layer and like that done Let's tidy that up a bit So just a small tip whenever you are working with uh, tracks going in and out of pads being SMD through hole, vias, anything like that, um, always try to keep it going out of it straight um, because it's making a, a right angle, well it's a circle so it's not a perfect right angle, but it's an obtuse angle which is better than an acute angle. Because um, whenever they manufacture the board, which is done uh, using uh, acid to etch the copper away from the board, uh, having acute angles can cause what is called acid traps. So basically you have an acute angle like this with some acid which won't be rinsed off properly, might not be rinsed off properly um, after the etching. And so if this stays there, this can cause problems in the board. Um, I have never experienced it personally. I haven't done thousands of boards either, but it's just good practice to avoid doing that. Um, so yeah, just like this is, is enough. Uh, same thing for the pads. When you see this, yeah, well, this one, it's okay because we have obtuse angle both uh, there, um, but this one is, this is good too. Uh, this one will keep it uh, this way because we have LVDS pairs and I don't like to get too close to those. And then... Um, yeah, we don't have that many signals to route. So reset is done. Then we have those two and those two, but uh, I don't know if we will use them anyway, and uh, we will have plenty of room around um, to place the connectors, so let's do that later on once everything else is done. Uh, it's really not, not a priority. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we are left with the um, RF tracks. And yeah, for this, um, yeah, I was kind of hoping for uh, Watcher to be around um, because basically we have an issue with um, the location of the SMA connector, okay? So this is uh, that connector. Uh, if I if we look at it in 3D, I don't think we can see the connector. Uh, yeah, we only see the pads, uh, despite the rest of the components being there. Uh, also, don't worry too much about the silk screen for now. Uh, those will be placed when we are done with the routing, because we really don't need them to be placed uh, at specific location so yeah we can just drop them where we have some room uh, later on not a problem um, so yeah we will have a look at this reference so that you can understand what uh, we are facing so this is what it looks like um, maybe we can have a look at a data sheet to, that shows it when it's mounted on a PCB. But basically, it's kind of a kind of clipping on the edge of the of the PCB, and then you have to solder this so that it's uh, held properly and uh, makes good contact. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
and this is the yeah okay 216 pages forget it okay um so we need that to to hang over the the outside of the board this is supposed this is how it's supposed to be however like this um So this board is going to be mounted on a nuclear board from STM and uh, this way is more how it's going to be. So um, if you have a look at uh, the board and the board on the screen and the board in my hand, um, basically it would place the SMA connector around here, sticking out like this. So this would indeed be uh, quite an uncommon arrangement. Um, if you look at basically any other HG on the market, it's going to be, uh, of course, the antenna on top. And so, yeah, having the antenna on the edge uh, will cause a problem because then we are going to have an antenna <laughs> which um, it's not going to be very user friendly, so you can imagine this. So it's either you have to use it like this, which is not uh, the way the screen is going to be oriented in the final application. I guess it would make no sense. Or we would have to place it on the top. But on the top, we have the connector for the um, for the the USB power supply, which I expect is going to be used a lot because it will be more convenient to use 5 volt from the power supply for the power supply from a power bank than having to use two lithium batteries. So if um, we decide to put the SMA connector on top that, that means that we are gonna have basically USB cable and the antenna at the same same place and um, it's not really good to have that because that means that you are gonna have uh, induced currents in the in the cable and the cable is gonna disturb the radiation pattern of of the antenna and it's not that good but we also don't have many many possibilities um, Uh, Bastien, no, we can't move the the USB, uh, or we no, we can't move the USB because it's soldered here on the board. This is the USB I'm talking about. This is the one from STM. We can't move that. We could use an angle cable, but then that means that we would have to buy a specific cable for this. What we may look for is. Could we have maybe an angled edge PC, PCB edge connector that would allow us to have the antenna like this? Um, which would be um, better, not perfect, but better, I guess. Um, Bibin, can you help me find a suitable resource for 100 watts LED MC PCB and constant current LED driver design? For this kind of research, I uh, advise you to go on uh, Mauser, uh, DigiKey, RS Components, Farnell, any uh, provider that you like and just do research based on that. If you don't find anything, you can also try to go uh, on Octoparts um, and using a few keywords, it's like uh, a basic search engine, but for uh, electronic components. And so uh, type a few keywords, keywords in Octoparts and see what it gives you. And uh, if you need uh, if you need anything more um, specific, then maybe just see what are the manufacturers that Octoparts gives you and uh, the other um, distributors give you, and then go through their catalogs. Oh yeah, rotates. Um, but then the problem is that actually we could. Actually, yeah, okay. I see what you are saying about the USB on the bottom. Um, the thing is, I don't have the connector um, 
what do they say about the dimensions of the connector? Uh, let's have a look. Um, and maybe we could fit it just about this. So this USB is a user USB, which I don't think we are going to use much. And if we do, probably not while transmitting. So this might be a good idea. Um, okay, so this is their drawing. And they say it's 9.52 millimeters, so about a centimeter wide. And by using my trusty cheap caliper, that would fit actually. Um, that would fit, but that also means that we would have to reroute everything, um, basically. <laughs> well, we don't have that many... Um, So the fan out is already done, which would be the most annoying thing to redo. Also, that means that we would have, the, yeah, that, that, that would not be a big problem, would it? To have the speaker and the RF, no, I don't think it would, anyway. Um, yay. Yeah. Yeah, right angle USB cable is also a possibility, but that means that uh, you mostly don't have one at home or if you have, you only have one. Um, but also, this is a mini USB, which is already quite annoying. Um, so, yeah, I would prefer that we have a board that is done properly and we don't have to have external specific components. Uh, design resource, not part resources. Well, Bibin, I don't, I never used a 100 watts LED controller, so uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, look in the data sheets. Look if you have already a specific component in mind. Have a look at the application notes that the manufacturer gives you, and it would be more accurate than what I could say. I I think. Okay, so should we try to um, reroute everything so that we have, so this one we can move it, it's no, no problem. And then, yeah, we would really have to put it this. Um, we just have to pay attention that we have uh, something here on the PCB, which is about roughly 13 millimeters away from the edge of the board, so maybe we can place um, keep out. on bottom and uh, we will call that IDD jumper because that's what is blocking us on the um, on the nuclear board and so uh, it would be
okay like this and uh, we are just do a keep out for footprints uh, we can have everything we want except footprints so this one needs to be tight right there but it's it's okay um, Yeah, that would do it, I think. Um, what clearance do we have vertically? Um, we have about a centimeter. And so this is plenty enough for us to slide this there. Okay, um, so what do you think? Should I flip basically the content of the PCB? So um, mostly the group formed by the transceiver and the FPGA, flip it 180 degrees so that we have the RF output which are facing the SMA connector. And um, and then reroute the, the different various uh, IOs that we routed previously. Waiting for your answers, guys. <laughs> Save us. Um, yes. Um, yeah, okay, we can always do save as, but I don't really like that because I. it will be one way or another. I won't switch between versions infinitely, so... Um, but yes, indeed. Maybe can we have a look at... Um, okay, let's go on DigiKey maybe and have a look at what kind of SMA connectors exist but I don't think that we are going to find anything uh, right angles that we can mount on the edge of the board I don't think it will be or at, le at least it's, I think it should be expensive if we find it Mm, am I in the correct category? Yes, this is... Then we need... Um, oh! So... Right angles... Uh, Oh, it seems that it does exist, actually. Sorry, everything is in French, but yeah. Um, it would be faster if I put it in French, trust me. Uh, it's just okay. Like that. And uh, we need an SMA connector. So, where do you pick that? Here, Siri, SMA, 4, oh yeah. Mm. No, we don't, okay. So, and, <laughs> whoa, those are crazy, okay, it's, is it like 53 euros a piece? Really? And people buy that? Yeah, up to 12 gigahertz, but still quite expensive. Okay, well. Um, no, there, there won't be any rotary knobs on the boards, uh, but there will be two buttons, uh, one for the PTT and then one for the power button. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, better be solid gold at that price, I hope so. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the rotary knob would mostly... Um, yeah, so we are going to have a touch screen. So this is touch screen. So um, we are just going to use that for the proof of concept. Indeed, in the final product, having... Uh, a rot rotary knob is probably more user friendly than having all on the touch screen. Mm. Uh, at least I prefer that we have um, this kind of a thing, um, but we will discuss that later on. This is just a proof of concept to see if we can have an assembly, uh, have it working correctly, do the first debugging steps. So. Yeah, we will be able to do some power measurements, noise measurements, sensitivity, the first communication on the PCB between the FPGA and the transceiver, also with the MCU. Um, we will be able to show, show it around. Um, so I'm looking at you, Ham Radio in Germany, Friedrich uh, We hope to have a proof of concept ready by then, which would be fantastic. Okay, you know what? Um, let's break that. That too. Break that. That. Yes, time to flip. This can move uh, out of the way. Okay. No, no time for freezing, please, GPU. Leave me alone. This move, move out of my way. Um, Okay, first we are gonna move if you are not used to kick to KiCad or maybe other PCB design softwares, just know that depending on the way you move you move your mouth when you are doing a selection, you will either select everything that you touched or everything that you entirely covered. So if I if I go from right to left, I will select everything that I touch. So if you look at the connector uh, right here, you will see that I will select it because I only touched it. If I do from left to right and I cover part of the connector, I won't select it because I didn't cover it entirely. So this is quite uh, quite nice to know actually um, because you often are in a situation where you only need to select some components and when they are so tight all together it's really nice to have this kind of feature so same thing here I'm gonna go from right to left so that I select um, no from left to right sorry um, and those when uh, Yeah, I can't. Okay, I did something and it fucked up the board. <laughs> what the. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> The poor LVDS lines! <laughs> okay. What? What is that? Okay, I'm 
holding escape key and it's kind of undoing all this mess slowly. Nice way to do a time lapse actually. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Okay, that's okay, this way. Good. Um, so I will just remove those tracks too. We don't need them and they are kind of in the way. So now, all right. And flip, flip. Okay, we will move that out and uh, clean up this again so that we have all the room we need. And so we will maybe need to um, rearrange the IOs between FPGA and um, mostly actually on the, on the Arduino Uno connector so that they are aligned, uh, aligned with what we have on the, on the chips. But we will see that um, just, uh, just as we did yesterday, actually. Um, so like this, then we have... Uh, oh, actually the routing will be simplified a lot, I guess, because all the pins that we had to make cross the boards from left to right yesterday, now they are on the good side of the board. So actually, I think this was a pretty good idea to flip it. So, yeah, thanks. Um, and so, yeah, here we are going to have all the room needed, I guess, to put the, yeah, the balance. Uh, we have this RF switch, but this is, this is one tiny guy. Um, yeah, I mean, you take two capacitors and it's already larger than the, than the switch, so... Tiny, small switch. Okay, um, mm -hmm. also, um, we will be able to have the buttons. Uh, near the thumb and the index finger, if we hold it like this, um, which is good too. Uh, so we could actually do, uh, yeah, I would tend to do kind of the, the same as a phone, so with um, power supply button maybe here and then a PTT here. But we will see that uh, later on. Uh, okay, time to rewrote some signals. Uh, so there are some that we won't be able to rearrange at least on the connectors. So those are the SPI pins. They need to to be on specific board pins, but on the FPGA they can be anywhere we want. Uh, and also there is a strict uh, pinout for the transceiver, of course. Okay, let's see this one. How, where does it go? 
Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Um, Okay, uh, those will stay, and those, uh, okay. SPI MISO, so this will need to be. Hi, Mark. Uh, you ordered an STM32. Yeah, you. Yeah, it's good. Thanks. I hope you will be able to help us. So, this will be the next big step. Actually, uh, this the boards. It's harder to work uh, several people together on the board, mm, mainly because yeah, KiCad doesn't make it easy to share the design between several people at the same time. Uh, while for code, it's more easy to do that. So we will be able to be to have several people working together on the boards uh, on the um, on the code for the board. We are gonna have to decide on how and what we want to do. Um, we already had some ideas with uh, Fautier, but it was not decided. It was not final decision yet. So uh, I think we will call for help uh, for everybody who wants to be involved in this and then discuss that all together. It should be better this way. Okay, um, let's concentrate because I have signals going all around the place and I need to reroute them cleanly. I07. This one needs to cross the board. Okay but also it comes from here so all this needs to be removed come on mouse so this let's go to the bottom layer And then simply go down to where we need to go. Good. Um, I O seven. Yeah, that's it. This one. Oh, what a weird connection. Okay, better. IO6, I guess it needs to go about the same place. So, cross. Hey, what are you doing? Um, okay. Good. <laughs> Better than Netflix. Well, thanks, I guess. <laughs> yeah, here you can learn maybe more than your typical Netflix binge watching series. At least I hope so. <laughs> Why do you show me the net on this? Okay, and now you don't show it more. Okay. Um, okay. 
the code is using platform yo um we don't have any code yet i think um so we what i planned on doing um but as as we said it's not a final decision what i planned on what i planned on doing was to use cubemx uh, because their code generation would help us a lot in speeding up the process um they have free rtos which is already uh, ready to go just need to click to enable it and then uh, then you can use all the st uh, libraries which are quite okay it's okay to use um it's not the most efficient but it's not the goal of this proof concept uh, we won't be aiming for uh, crazy battery life and so on we just want this to work and to prove that the concept is valid they are gonna have there are gonna be many many things to add on the next version um so uh, i want to be able to recharge this using my phone charger for example usb-c power delivery is gonna be should be on the on the on the final version for example so yeah between this proof of concept and the last version there are gonna be a lot of changes um for the graphic library for the screen, we intended on using LVGL. So you can already see uh, the LVGL port have been updated recently. This is, uh, yeah, I did that because we were trying to run the uh, LVGL examples on this board and so now you can do it. So yeah, but we don't have any code base. We are gonna also use, my, I think, um, OpenRTX but i never had a look at this piece of code so i don't know how openrtx works okay um i o zero where do you need to go all the way down um but i would like you to go all the way up actually so i o five and i o zero i guess we are just gonna undo the changes that we did yesterday actually um go here um like this uh let's put them side by side so that we can do it without switching window all the time so we have IO0 and then IO1 which needs to be uh, swapped with IO4 so IO1 needs to be right here and this can go down there then IO3 needs to be swapped with IO2 Yeah, basically putting them back in order and uh, I guess we are going to have to swap 6 and 7, are we? Oh no, they are on the other side of the board and they are okay, so we can leave this like that and import the changes, update PCB and what is this? Okay. But then we have the clock, which is kind of in the way. Uh, and also this doesn't need to go up. Uh, RF reset. Yeah, this doesn't need to go up either. This is IO6 and it needs to go... It's already routed there actually, so this can disappear. This 
this doesn't need to go up and this we'll see later on okay we'll see that later um, mm -hmm. so maybe I don't know what should I do with clock output. I like to have it uninterrupted. Um, I really hope that this long track is not gonna create any problem. Um, because it's gonna well it's gonna feed the FPGA and it's generated by the transceiver so it's not so if it's a, a tad bit noisy it's not that much of a problem I guess because it's not like it's generating any RF RF signal or, or something like that so um, Anyway, okay, let's do like this. Not a big deal. I O four. Um, yeah, this can just be routed on the bottom layer like this. What is this track? Serial clock doesn't need to go here. Bye bye. IO2. Same thing. but it needs to go all the way down. Mm, this, what was this? Oh, I think it's the... Yeah, it's a JTAG enable pin, uh, which we will route last because it's, uh, it's not critical at all. I O one, where do you need to go? all the way down all the way down um, so this and this this what is it this is just this point so we can move that and place it whenever we have time to do that later on in the space that we have left this can go down Here is good. Like that. So that we have space around the ground pins. So can we route this uh, like this, I guess we have 
not lots of choice. Come on. Okay, what are you doing? I don't want you to be... Uh, some problems with the keyboard shortcuts, it seems. Doesn't obey me as it should. Mm -hmm. Okay. IO0, also need to delete this. And then go down. Um, maybe we should swap IO0 and IO1. It would be easier for us. Let's do that. So then this only needs to go there and this can be just next to it. Okay, so this is typically what I don't like to have. Um, it's not going straight out of it and so then you can see that, yeah, it's just not that great. Just do it like this and uh, it's better, okay. Like that, like that, and then straight to the connector. Okay. Okay, so great. Um, we rerouted all the IOs, um, and now we have to do the SPI. Um, which needs to be okay this one needs to go down but this is a slave select line and this yeah okay so basically we only need to route um, them from here actually so this needs to go well, let's try to do it just straight like this. Um, maybe we can also route them on the top layer, actually. We don't have anything going around. Yeah, it would be better. We don't need this via... Well, except, of course, to connect it to the rest of the yeah okay so like this then right this one needs to go there, uh, give it some space, clearance a bit, like that. This is like the decline, and this needs to go, okay, so what we should do is sort the two slave select lines actually. So this will be done in the connector sheet. Uh, so SPI NSS2 and SPI... Where is it? Uh, 
Oh no, I lost it. No. Huh? No. Here. Select, select one. Okay. And then import changes and suddenly routing became much easier. This will need to um, go It's doing weird things with the vias. Um, it's not always creating the the track on the bottom layer, except if I move before placing the via, which is a bit weird behavior and unexpected. And this like that, okay. Um, hmm? This. What is it? Um, in it and oh yeah yeah yeah, it's um, yeah programming in it and those needs to be rerouted of course to the other side of the board too. Um, so maybe we don't. Yeah, let's see how we handle that. Also. Mm, maybe we could have um, programming and in it and swapped with IO6 and 7 so that they are routed to um, yeah each on their side of the board it would be easier we would have less signals crossing So six and seven and init and then programming. So those two need to be swapped with first this and then this. Except that um I want it the IOs to be protected by a resistor. So this this move out of my way. Um, random sidebar question, what settings, what setting in KiCad redraws the copper power when you move a via or a trace? Uh, I think it's in the PCB uh, drawing settings, we will have a look uh, right after. First, let's finish with those signals. And then, and then we'll see for that. And then uh, I will brew myself a cup of tea. Okay, I hope I don't have to swap again six and seven and program in anything between each other um, import update six and seven and uh, yeah 
oh yeah, we might need to shift everything so that six and seven are to on top, and then all, oh yeah, uh, we might need to do that. Um, well, let's take the time for that later. <laughs> Um, okay, so I think for the redrawing of the copper pores, it's um, no, it's uh, preferences, PCB editor, and uh, or is it maybe a combination with the Oh, yeah, okay. Miscellaneous auto refill zones. Uh, you can check or keep it unchecked. Um, usually, when you have a board as simple as this one, you can keep it checked. It's not, not a problem. But then, if you have many, many layers and very complex planes, then it can slow down the design a lot. So, you would only re redraw it uh, manually from time to time. Okay, uh, you know what, let's make a short break and uh, get back in a few minutes. So, um, yeah, see you in a few minutes, guys. Um, about, let's say, five minutes break, okay? Bye!
Okay, welcome back guys. I am Gigaback uh, with a cup of tea. So yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, YouTube tells me that there is not... Okay, but still people are watching anyway. Okay, uh, YouTube is... Not accounting for oh, oh yeah but maybe Casey um, Steve you are looking from the watching from the from the Google uh, YouTube console is, are you so you do not count as a viewer I feel so lonely right now all right so um, yeah restream console okay okay um, So we just flipped everything on the board and um, I think we really should um, move those all the way so we would need to have uh, the 7 then the 6 uh, IO7 and IO6 on top and then actually we, we just need them in the sorted down order so let's do that um, so that would be seven and six like this three would be here four um, four here Come on, and okay, freeze seven. Right, and so like this. Um, we should be good. Oh, except that. Um, I wanted to have the um, volume dropped, uh, did it? I, okay, just, wait, well, yeah, um, I don't even know if I have the automatic gain enabled, actually. Um, I can have a look at that. Where is it? Hmm. Maybe, do I have the real text? installed or something like that stupid windows 11 i don't even know how this works now i have like three options while i used to have about 15 different menus okay um i'm trying to fix the sound if you do hear me <laughs> um Yeah, sorry for your ears, but I'm watching the volume monitor. And yes, indeed, it seems that the sound is actually pretty low for now. Um, I don't know why I changed like nothing. And suddenly it seems like... Yeah.
Okay, if I do do it like this, you should hear me um, better. But still, I don't know what changed. Um, was there a specific time where the volume dropped? Or is it like when I came back from the break? Yeah, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't do like lots of live streams, so I, I'm not used to it yet. Um, Okay, this is the menu I was looking for. And uh, what I don't understand. There is no automatic gain enabled, it seems. And uh, still, uh, I hate it so much. Yeah, no, I don't need that. Okay, so now I guess... Oh, God. Is it, is it better now? <laughs> Sorry for your ears, guys. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the volume was fine uh, initially. It just decided that it would shut me down and then get back and... Um... Okay, good. Um, yeah, everyone is awake. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, so it seems that um, a good thing to awaken the chat is just put your microphone gain to the maximum. <laughs> Sorry for your colleague, Steve. <laughs> um, yeah, I had the problem is which is that uh, so initially I wanted to be able to use um, some IO so IO three four five as the SPI bus uh, from SPI two from the MCU so that um, as we are not sure um, what is gonna be the final setup we need to have. Um, backup plans let's say one of those backup plans is to use three ios as a second spi bus so that we could have an spi bus which is not the same as the one we use to program the fpga and this would then allow us to keep this um, spi bus as the configuration spi bus and maybe extract some data while the fpga is running i'm not really sure about that yet I don't have the FPGA evaluation board and uh, I'm not really used to FPGA so 
this is one of uh, yeah one of the ideas would be have a backup plan two SPI bus one the, one for the configuration and one for the data. And when I speak about configuration, I speak about sending the FPGA binary for its own configuration before it's starting to do what we ask of it. Um, bye, Bastien. Um, so, three, four, five for the SPI bus. And uh, if we have a look here, then it's not three, four, five, but P good. Now it's uh, it shouldn't be here. Um, but wh where do I have to route it? P good. Um, Let's put them side by side. Okay, P good, it's here, it's here. Yeah, okay, it's from the power supply. Why is it there? That's weird. I don't remember having put that there. Um, so PB8 and 9, we can't use it because it's going to be tied to... Um, uh, it's tied internally to the I2C1 bus, so there is going to be activity on those pins, so we can't reuse them. So I guess our best bet is to... put P good... Uh, do we have any IOs free here? Um, yeah, maybe we can just sh shift those three down by one and have P good here. That would be good. So P good. Come on. No, no. Like this. Okay. No. Okay, well. Just gonna pick those two. Put this like that. Oh, I received. Oh, okay. This a wonderful sound in your ears, which also pierced my eardrums, was uh, the Amphenol website, which decided I, that, that I had to chat with one of their employees. Why not? Um, so then, um, okay, so I guess we can just shift everything up. And also, so use this like that so that we have um, resistors on the SPI bus to protect it from for EMI reasons and then uh, no not that one you need to go here so we are gonna keep IO0 and IO1 because they are internally connected to the user which well doesn't hurt to keep that uh, in the long list of possible backup plans. All right. So this and okay. Let's see how it's what it does on the board. I'm just gonna unroute those so that we don't have any 
conflicts. This also. And uh, that was a weird kink. So those we need to break connection and we should be good so dates so now those need to go same place but what okay what is that I07 Yeah, okay. What did I... No, okay, it's good, okay. Uh... This needs to be connected to this one, which like that. Okay, uh, this can be simplified a bit, like this. Um, all our tracks are too high actually, let's lower them a bit, like that. track this okay that I uh, will align it like so all right this needs to go on down there and this needs to okay because yeah but this is fine this Go like that. And this needs to be removed because we need to route it like this. This need to go here. And this need to go uh, like 
that. Okay, just remove the nets, okay. What is this pin? This is the done pin, okay, and um, yeah, okay. Um, couldn't we route the down pin somewhere like? Oh, we have this small forgotten resistor right here. All right, which is for the P good in it and and this. Uh, in its end. Uh, this should go here, I think. And this. Okay. I just need to swap the resistors. Give them some space. And then remove and reroute. That's two. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, Steve, it seems like we are alone again. Are we? I see nobody, which means that there is only you. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, I will actually move this down again like that. Okay, no, 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 come on, come on. And this too, like that, move down, okay. And here I will place the done thingy. Doesn't matter where we put it. I don't know what is causing freezes on my computer, but it seems that this thing... Ah. Audio. Um, ha, huh, yeah. Okay. Okay, um, I can see on OBS that the volume is now... The um, view meter is... Uh, low but I don't know how to restore that behavior but yeah that's that, that didn't change anything <coughs> so this oh but why does it The volume is at zero, but it is still somehow um, losing my voice. And so if I put it at 100%, I guess it's going to be back to normal. 
Like, okay, yeah. Okay, so for some reasons, it seems that maybe I'm too loud and then it decide to cut me out. I'm gonna try. Okay, so um, maybe 85. Okay, I will try to run with this. Um, tell me if it's uh, good like this. Okay. It definitely seems to be uh, Windows tight. Uh, So, yeah. this we can remove and put a little cross like so. Okay, and then re import. Um, I don't think it's tied to USB because um, really what happens is that yesterday, so I had an old AMD W5500 lying around that a friend lent me and just I decided to put that in the computer and tell the computer to, to run the hardware encoding of the stream on this board and that is when the freeze is appeared. But if you look at the st usage statistics, the board is used at like 30 persons for the video codec. So I don't know. Um, I didn't have, nobody reported me the sound issues yesterday. And also yesterday I had the, this only this card in the system. So. I don't know. But the freezes, I talk about them, but they are there a lot. Um, especially when I'm on the schematic. Um, a bit less on the uh, PCB drawing, but still a bit. So we can route this down. To here. Okay, and then those can go straight down. Like so. Um, this is the PTT. Um, yeah, we'll see if we have to, if we want to move that around later on. Um, but I guess the button is going to be around here, so yeah, we'll take care of that later. This we need to clean and, uh, okay. Yeah. It's taking shape. I think it's 
better now than it was previously. Um, this right here. I use zero right there. Remove that. This needs to go. What is this signal? Oh yeah, the IRQ from the transceiver. Um, yeah. Okay. This is. Hmm, this is a bit annoying. I would have preferred to have it be on the other side of the of the bottom tracks of the tracks on the bottom so I didn't have to cross multiple times. Um or maybe I can just do um get this away. Like that, pull that like this, and this can then move like that. Uh, oh, yeah, we have a ground via, uh, it's all right. Can get it closer and uh, this we can also move that like that pull again on that via a bit higher and <laughs> yeah the wi the wiggles doesn't display cleanly in the chat that's a bit sad you can't see the magnificent Wiggle emotes. <coughs> okay, like this chamfer is better always. And now Now we can actually move that a bit more. So the goal is to, okay. Uh, the goal is to free up some space so that we can have the track on the top crossing over the, the tracks on the bottom and then go on the bottom straight to the IRQ pin. Does it make sense? this and then now we can cross uh, maybe yeah and then go can you take this side and then there right or yeah it would make more sense to raise io0 and 1 by oh no because i wanted to have those for the uart i guess is it yes okay so it's all right this way uh it's fine um those it's uh, spi bus Um, 
Where does this need to go? Yeah, down. Okay, great. And we don't even need a VI anymore. This also needs to be routed. Um, but it is on the wrong side. So uh, then yeah, we will put the VI further away. So just go up. press the balls and then route that like this perfect uh, why is there a VR mm, don't need it great and so now this needs to go okay this will be for main kill which is right there oh yeah okay so this is for the power button and this will be placed around on the top of the board this we can put back on the board too um, okay i guess this way is good um, So this is the fuse, poly fuse to protect the battery. Um, this is the LDO, which is gonna down. Um, she's gonna down regulate the 1.8 volt to a clean 1.0 with as little oscillations as possible. Just gonna do oh yeah we have the ground plane in the middle um, so we don't actually need the ground plane to be one piece and um, because it's gonna be tied by the layer just under it so we can do That's, and can we remove, okay, we can remove the corners. Good, and so, yeah, it seems to have too many corners. Yeah, good. So that we can have uh, this going here. And I'm gonna use thicker track. Which is the enable pin and which is the power supply pin? V input is pin one, okay, so and this is just the enable pin, so we can do it like this. It's fine. Now we have, and uh, this will be, I guess, uh, output capacitor. And this is the divider bridge to have the, the feedback from the output. So like this, like this. Okay, and uh, this is the LDO done. What is this? 
Oh yeah, it's the right beat uh, for the PGA. We are gonna do that later on. Um, maybe next week we will attack the power supply part. This is gonna be a big one. Um, so yeah, plenty of stuff to do f if we want to have a good power supply. And this, okay, tidy that up a bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Starting to look very good to me. Um, now we have enough room again to have the TCXO in line. Okay, good. So, and this can be um, brought back closer. rooms on the vias I guess we can do that like this okay um I won't be much longer I won't uh, go to sleep too late today um so we didn't route any of the RF tracks yet. Um, can we do a bit today, maybe? Um, what do we have? So the outputs, they are routed. So the outputs are supposed to be differential signals. So it's better if the tracks are matched to the correct impedance. But I don't think it's going to be critical anyway, because it's only a few millimeters long. If you check this one, it's uh, like four millimeters long from this pad to this pad, which is basically nothing. And this one is two millimeters long. And we could even bring that uh, closer to the, um, to the transceiver to spare a few millimeters like this and so yeah um, maybe like so um, So yeah, anyway, if it's not properly matched, it's no big deal. Same thing goes here. Um, it's not very long, so it doesn't need to be matched very precisely. Um, however, I will, I'm gonna try to keep them as aligned as possible. So I'm gonna pick finer grid, remove the tracks quickly. And, uh, yeah. and So this one can't be routed as a differential pair, so let's just do that and bring them close. Like this should be enough. And this one is 2.2 millimeters. Let's do it here too. 
0.2 millimeters. Okay. Now, which component is this? Oh yeah, it's the capacitor, uh, the inductor, and um, then we need to route. Okay, how do we need? Oh, it does cross. Oh, what a shame. It's annoying, actually. But we could. Um, we don't care, actually. Which one is um, the P and which one is the N? Yesterday I avoided the speaker and I still do, um, but the speaker is on the bottom and the red tracks are on the top, so there are at least two planes in between, so it shouldn't be an issue uh, this way. So yeah, it should be fine. is angry okay uh, so import changes and uh, yeah of course I need to swap those what did I do okay Move that one. the wrong one. And so this one like this. Okay, perfect. And now good. Um however those this is a bit too close. I'm gonna this further from the sub gigahertz part uh, so yeah in like this Ooh, this is messy. Okay. Uh, bring those a bit closer. Why isn't this symmetrical? Ah. Fuck, I pressed on the macro key. Okay. Um. Why is that? 
No, it's not aligned perfectly. Like this, is it? Yeah, I guess we are never gonna have it aligned exactly, so let's not worry too much. This one, like this, good. And then you have this output and this output, and those two need to go. <laughs> macro tools, indeed. This one is just a stupid macro which types stupid text. So it's, I should maybe remove it, but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, the filters. Uh, like this. Oh yeah, and those need to be 0.2 millimeter, I guess. Oh, they are already good. So those are matched by um, the net class. And um, then the blocking DC capacitor, like such. Yeah, I don't know, uh, Fochir, if you are um, watching the stream or not. Um, hello? Concurrent viewers, too. Um, so I don't know if you hear me, maybe just drop a message in the chat if you hear me. Well, okay, I'm um, gonna drop a message in on Discord then. Um, what did I want it to say? I don't even remember. Anyway, it's getting late. Um, just gonna route a few tracks, a few more tracks, and then leave it there for today. Um, yeah, the last part is the tiny, tiny, tiny switch. Really? Oh, we need to uh, to swap RF1 and RF2. Uh, I don't have the motivation to do that today. Um, did you want both speaker tracks to be the same width? I'm not sure if they are. Um, speaker tracks, they are the s oh no, indeed, they are not the same width. Oh, f funny. Okay. Um, yeah, let's use 0.25 so it's a bit thicker. Oh yeah, I, I s changed the, the P and they didn't, didn't change the N, I, I believe, something like that. Um, but yeah, good catch. Thank you. Oh, this one isn't routed yet. And this needs to go all the way to the other side of the board. So, um, I guess, where am I gonna put that? Maybe just do that actually. 
Uh, don't worry too much about it. It's going to be a bit annoying um, because we are going to have vias everywhere around the RF part and so we will need to cross basically minefield. Um, so yeah, let's do that another day. Okay, well. Um, Let's keep it there for today. We still have a few things to place, uh, mainly this, which is the IC, which will control the power button, then the two buttons, a uh, few GPIOs and uh, headers and pins and so on. And finish this RF subsystem. And then this will be a good first milestone for the PCB layout, then we will need to do the power supply, which I think um, is going to force us to move around some things around the, um, the chips, but that's that's not a, a real problem. Um, we are just going to rearrange, shove around everything we need so that we can have as many vias as needed to have a good design. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you very much, um, mainly for s to mainly thank you, Steve, for being there the whole time. <laughs> and um, yeah, we will tell you whenever uh, we will do a new live, uh, which I guess should be next week. So in the meantime, pass the word around. Let's people know that they can have a uh, live stream here for the night uh, with uh, my very soft voice. And bye-bye um, then. See you around later.